Hi there, this is Connie. Welcome to another edition to my Paranormal Romance Obsession. Today we are going to talk about um, two of the next books in the Laurel K. Hamilton, Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series. And this would be um, 9 and 10, I believe. Um, and we are going to talk about Obsidian Butterfly and Narcissus in Chains. This is the, the omnibus that they're in, and again, um, I've talked to you about omnibuses before, if you've watched my other ones, and omnibus is several uh, books in one volume. So it's, this is, the artist is Louis Royo again. This book is called Nightshade Tavern. Here is a better, look at it so it's not glaring here. But it shows the cobras, and it shows the um, zombie-type deals there. And Anita, of course. And she's got the cross around her neck. She's got that Indian guy that I'll talk about on the other side of her there, kind of behind her here. Oh, right here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about Laurel, just like always. I kind of looked up stuff um, about her today and I did not find much else that's what's in here so I'm going to repeat what I always say so um, Laurel K Hamilton was born February 19th 1963 and is an American fantasy and romance writer she is best known as the author of two series of stories her this store this book that we are talking about is Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series and it centers on Anita Blake a professional zombie raiser vampire executioner and supernatural consultant for the police which includes novels short story collections and comic books there are six million copies of the Anita Blake uh, novels in print as of now so uh, Laurel is was born Laurel K. Klein in Herber Springs, Arkansas, but grew up in Sims, Indiana with her grandmother, Laurel Gentry. She is married. Her husband is John, and they have a daughter. Okay, the first book I'm going to talk about is Obsidian Butterfly. And I'm really sorry again. Um, ink is not high on my priorities right now, so things are coming out in black and white. Uh and this is off of Laurel's website that I'm going to read. And then I have, I found some more information on the books on Wip, Wip, Wikipedia, Wikipedia.com today. So Obsidian Butterfly is the ninth book. There are a lot of monsters in Anita Blake's life, and some of them are human. One such individual is a man she calls Edward, a bounty hunter who specializes in the pre-natural. He calls her to help him hunt down the greatest evil she has ever encountered. Something that kills and maims and vanishes into the night. Something Anita will have to face alone. My name is Anita Blake. I'd like you to meet Edward. Edward is a hitman. He specializes in monsters, vampires, shapeshifters, anything and everything. There were people like me who did it legal, but Edward didn't sweat the legalities or, hell, the ethics. He was an equal opportunity killer. I may be one of the few friends that Edward has, but it's like being friends with a tame leopard. It may curl at the foot of your bed and let you pet its head, but it can still eat your throat out. Okay, and um, the explanation for the titles, I found this, which I find very interesting. Um, as with previous novels, Obsidian Butterfly refers to a location within the novel itself in this case, the Obsidian Butterfly is the name of a nightclub operated by It's a Papalodal. Now, that name is just a bunch of letters to me. I can't tell what it even, how to pronounce it. Anyway, it's a... <laughs> it's, it's Papalodal a vampire who claims to be the Aztec goddess of the same name. 
the plot summary on this. Um, in Obsidian Butterfly, Anita travels to New Mexico to repay the favor that she promised Edward at the end of the killing dance. Edward wants Anita to assist in a set of apparently supernatural attacks that have left numerous victims dead and has skinned alive many survivors. In the course of this investigation, Anita learns more about Edward's personal life than she ever has before. She meets Donna, Edward's fiancée, in his civilian identity of legal bounty hunter Ted Forrester, and Donna's children, Peter and Becca. She and Edward also come into conflict with a new number of mercenaries who work for Edward's former boss, Van Cleef, allowing Anita to learn a few clues about Edward's former life. Anita also comes into contact with a number of possible suspects and sources for information. The Aztec vampire and purported goddess, it's Palapalo. Her priest and human service, Pinotal, local Ulfric, Roland, and Roland's necromancer, Vargamore, and local tough guy, Nicky Bacco. Ultimately, Anita learns that the second Aztec vampire god, Red Woman's husband, is awakened in New Mexico. After sleeping for centuries, Red Woman's husband began awakening when Riker, Harold's boss, raided his tombs, stealing several jade idols. In order to finish his awakening, Red Woman's husband's priest and his animal servant has been skinning and killing the people that brought the idols stolen from his tomb, animating the skinned corpses as servants. Makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Not really. If, you know, unless you're reading it, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. Riker takes Becca and Paige hostage in an attempt to force Anita to protect him from Red Woman's husband. But Anita, Edward, and Edward's associates, Bernardo and Olaf, rescue Edward's family and kill everyone involving involved with their kidnapping. Anita is captured in Red Woman by Red Woman's husband, who plans to consume her life energy to complete his awakening. But with Ista Papal's help, she is able to kill the vampire instead. Realizing that Edward loves his soon-to-be family in some way, Anita leaves them without interfering and refer returns to St. Louis to begin work on her own romantic relationships. I hope that made sense. Um... A lot of this, unless you're reading it, you don't know what the heck they're even talking about. So, anyway, this the tenth book in the series is Narcissus in Chains. And that is right there. And you can see the same theme with objects of torture and death on the front cover. Okay. Uh, Laurel K. Hamilton, author of the New York Times bestseller A Kiss of Shadows, returns to this series that started it all, Narcissus and Change. The tenth installment in the ever-popular Anita Blake series finds everyone's favorite vampire hunter back on her home turf and delving into the heart of human and non-human darkness. Men are men. Jean-Claude and Richard are each something else entirely. Anita Blake, Vampire Hunter, torn between them, has been avoiding both vampire and werewolf for months. But when a kidnapper targets innocents she has sworn to protect, Anita turns to them for help, which will require harnessing both their powers and their hungers. Six months of celibacy have made Anita crave the two men in her life like never before, but merging their powers together will give this mortal woman a taste of immortal hunger that she'll never be able to forget. And this is the start of, it, I'm halfway into the books now, just about, just about halfway. Um, I mean, she's got 22 or 23 books. Um, here is where it starts getting really explicit, um, each novel. Before, it really wasn't. It was about, it was more about fighting and um, the I don't know, just the being lovesick and um, a lot of adventure and a lot of traveling and a lot of killing and, and torturing and all that stuff, you know, and the vampire raising or the zombie raising, that kind of stuff. Now it gets into um, 
I mean, there's still a, all that stuff too. But now it gets into the explicit sex stuff. So if you really like that kind of stuff, keep reading the books. Um, I'm sure that you'll love them. I still love them, but I don't like them as much as I liked the previous 10. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, so there's a whole lot of plot here that I'm not going to read all of it. I mean, that's just a lot of stuff that you won't get anyway. But I'm going to read the explanation of the title. As with the previous novels, Narcissus and Chains refers to a location within the novel itself. In this case, Narcissus and Chains is the name of a dominance and submission nightclub operated by narcissist, a were hyena who is himself named after Narcissus of Greek myth. Okay, so let's see here. Let's let's read a, a few few of these paragraphs. Narcissus and Chains takes place shortly after the events of Obsidian Butterfly and approximately six months after the events of New Blue Moon. At the beginning of the novel, Anita Blake has been out of contact with Jean Claude Richard and the vampires and werewolves that follow her two lovers. After the events of the last novel, Anita is determined to renew her connections to Jean-Claude Richard and their followers, but she encounters several new problems as a result of marrying the marks that Jean-Claude has placed on Richard and herself. First, Jean-Claude feeds his ardor, ardor uh, a rare power seen only in vampires of Jean-Claude's bloodline through Anita. Shortly afterward, Anita develops the power herself, Although the power allows Anita to draw energy from lust, it also requires her to feed on the sexual energy every day, sometimes multiple times a day. Now that tells you about the explicit part of things. Um, okay, so I am not going to go on anymore because there's just a lot. I mean, there's this whole page and then there's about a third of the page here. So I'm not going to go on any farther than that. Um, I will read the insides of the covers here, though, like I always do. So, okay, Nightshade Tavern. Vampires call her the Executioner. Anita Blake, prenatural expert, raises the dead, helps the St. Louis police solve crimes, and is licensed to kill vampires. Seems everyone wants her help or wants her sex. Others want her dead. But our heroine doesn't take lip or fang from anyone. Yet she can't help getting romantically involved with vampires, werewolves, and shapeshifters, complicating her obligations to both the living and the undead. Let's see here. Obsidian Butterfly. Empty-eyed and icy-hearted, Edward is a professional hitman who specializes in monsters, and Anita may be his only friend. So when he calls in a favor, she's off to New Mexico, where in the last two weeks, 12 people have been murdered. They were the lucky ones. Other victims have been flayed yet kept horribly alive by magic. Anita is uncharacter uncharacteristically shaken, as much by Edward's new family man persona as by his crimes. But she must shelve her fear to help him hunt down the greatest evil she's ever encountered. It's ancient and devious, and in the end, she'll have to face it alone. Okay, and here we go with Narcissus and Chains. Six months have passed since Anita has seen either Jean-Claude or Richard. Six months of celibacy or indecision of danger. For her body carries the marks of both vampire and werewolf, and until their union is consummated, all three remain vulnerable. But when a sexual sadist kidnaps the were-leopard were she swore to protect, she needs all the help she can get. An explosive union with both lovers increases her power, but with a twist of fate leads her closely, closer to a startling transformation. Suddenly, she finds herself estranged from Richard and his wolf pack, just as she succumbs to the bloodlust and desire consuming her soul. All right, that is Narcissus and Chains and Obsidian Butterfly. Um, turned around there, 9 and 10 of the Anita Blake Vampire Hunter series, all in Omnibus Nightshide Nightside Tavern. I will have everything linked down below. And thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in our next installment next week.